question 4 says given the masses of various atomic particles m p equal to so much m n m e m in fact uh, neutrino or anti neutrino rather then mass of neutron where p is proton n is neutron e is electron in fact this is given as anti neutrino and d is neutron which of the following process is allowed by momentum and energy conservation well the four processes have been given and we have to select the one which is allowed considering momentum and energy conservation let us look at the options. If you look at the very first option we have n plus n no giving a deuterium. This reaction is not possible because of consideration of you know Pauli's exclusion principle. So, that is why two neutrons they do not fuse together as such. So, this reaction is ruled out. If we look at n plus p is equal to d plus gamma well here we see that you know the mass on the left hand side is coming out as greater than the mass on the right hand side that is clearly calculated from the values provided. So, this reaction is possible considering the energy and the momentum because you know the q value is going to be positive because mass of reactants is greater than mass of the product. Let us also analyze the other options. If you look at the third option, clearly mass of proton is less than mass of neutron itself. So, the q value for the third process is going to be negative. So, this is ruled out it will not happen. And finally, for the fourth process, the momentum cannot be conserved because if you consider that the momentum on the left hand side is 0 the gamma photon has a momentum. So, the momentum conservation principle is violated if we allow this kind of uh, equation to be considered as valid. So, in fact, if there had been another gamma photon that reaction is very much allowed that in fact is known as electron positron annihilation, but with only one gamma photon this reaction is not possible. So, with all this consideration it clearly means that the best option is option number 2. So, option 2 is correct for question 4. Let us now go to question 5. Question 5 says when a car is at rest its driver sees raindrops falling on it vertically. When driving the car with speed v he sees that raindrops are coming at an angle 60 degree from the horizontal on further increasing the speed of the car to 1 plus beta v this angle changes to 45 degree. The value of beta is close to. Now, the question is clearly from the topic relative velocity and if we look at the situation when the car is at rest the rain appears to fall vertically to the driver that means the rain is falling vertically with respect to the ground. Okay. So, let us draw the vector which shows the velocity of rain with respect to ground let us call it vr. The direction is known this is velocity of rain with respect to the ground and when the car is moving with speed v let us say that this is the velocity of the car the magnitude is v. Then with respect to the car the rain appears to come at an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal. So, that means we subtract from this vector this velocity vector. So, we add negative of that magnitude of course, will be v and if we do the addition this is the velocity of the rain with respect to car in the first case. Okay. So, let us call it v r c 1 and according to the question this angle is 60 degree. So, that helps us find a relation between the velocity of the rain and the velocity of the car. Now, because tan 60 degree is root 3 the value of tan 60 degree is also equal to v r by v. So, let us write it here v r by v is tan 60 degree that means root 3. This is one equation which will be handy for solving the question. Now, when the speed of the car is increased to 1 plus beta v the angle changes to 
45 degree. What does it mean? It means that V r is in fact equal to 1 plus beta V. Okay. So, that gives us the relation that V r which is root 3 V is also equal to 1 plus beta V and solving for beta is pretty easy now beta comes out as root 3 minus 1 and root 3 is 1.732. So, the value of beta comes close to 0.73. If you look at the options it clearly matches with option 3. It is time now to go to question number 6 and question 6 says a fluid is flowing through a horizontal pipe of varying cross section with speed v meter per second at a point where the pressure is p Pascal. At another point where pressure is p by 2 Pascal, its speed is v meter per second. If the density of the fluid is rho kg per cubic meter and the flow is streamlined, then v is equal to the 4 options are given. The question is from the topic Bernoulli's equation. Let us apply the Bernoulli's equation. Well, the height is same. So, pressure at the first point is P, the density of the liquid in fact or the fluid is given as rho. So, P plus half rho in the first case it is small v square, height being the same we do not have to take the rho gs term and for the second point the speed becomes capital V and the pressure becomes P by 2. So, in that case the equation is P plus half rho V square is equal to P by 2 plus half rho capital V square and we have to find or rather extract the expression for capital V from this equation. That is not difficult at all. We have half rho capital V square is equal to P by 2 plus half rho small v square. Let us cancel these 2's everywhere and the expression for capital V then comes out as you know it is under root of P divided by rho plus small v square. That is the expression for the speed at the point where the pressure has become P by 2 Pascal. Let us now check the options and among the options clearly option 1 matches with our solution. So, the question is done. Let us go to the next question now.